All right, so the topic of this video is going to be the central limit theorem. So central limit theorem is a really useful thing in statistics, and we'll learn why. So up until now, we've always been looking at the normal distribution. So, right, so the normal distribution is really useful, but not everything is normal. So not all um, data is distributed normally. So if it isn't distributed normally, if there isn't a normal distribution, we can't use z-scores. Um, which are kind of what we've been using so far to do most of our calculations. So we're going to have to use the central limit theorem instead. So we'll learn what that is. Um, so the example we have here is the distribution of pay in Ireland um, as an hourly rate, so in euros, and it's not normally distributed. So a lot more people get lower uh, end of the scale, and then only a few people are going to get the higher amounts, 50 and 60 euro an hour. So the mean is 22 euro an hour, 22.05, and the standard deviation is 10.64 euro an hour. So even though they're not normally distributed, you can still have a mean and standard deviation. All data is going to have one, um, but it just doesn't follow the empirical rule. So it's not as useful for non-normal um, distributions, but it's still useful. Right, so what we do to set up the central limit theorem is we can take a sample of 30 people from anywhere in Ireland that are working, and we ask them how much they get paid. Okay, so then we take the mean of all their answers. So say some people get 10, some people get 20, some people get 30, 40, 50, 60. We add them all together, divide by 30, um, and we find the mean of that, that sample, right? So then we do this another 1,000 times. So we ask 1,000 groups of 30 people, and we get the mean of their uh, incomes every single time, of how much they get paid an hour, right? So after we do that, if we plot all of those means, so some of the numbers are going to be 20, some of them are going to be 25, some of them are going to be 30, because they're the different samples of 30, if we or, yeah, of 30 different people. If we plot all of them, we're going to get a normal distribution like we see on the bottom. Um, and that's kind of the amazing thing about the central limit theorem. So it might not seem that impressive, but we'll see later that could be really useful, really, really useful for getting different things about the population. So um, yeah, we're going to get a normal distribution of when we plot the sample means. So there's four really important points about the central limit theorem that I'm going to go through one by one. So the first one says, first bullet point, the mean of the samples equals the mean of the population. Right, so I'll explain what that means. So remember we got um, samples of 30 people and then we did a thousand of those different samples. So when we get the mean each time, like I said, some means are going to be 20. It's going to be say 20, 20, 21, 25. Some of them are going to be, I don't know, 29, 30. For this, there's going to be a thousand different numbers of all the different means, um, and they're all they all come from these numbers right here. If we get the mean of all of these numbers here, the answer we'll get is going to be 22.05 every single time. As long as we have enough enough samples, the the mean will always be 22.05, and that's pretty useful because say for example we didn't know that the mean was 22.05. Say you hadn't asked everyone in Ireland what they get paid, and you're trying to find out what this is. What you can do is, instead of asking the 2 million people that are working, you can ask 1,000 groups of 30 people, that's 30,000 people, and um, you get the means of all their answers, and then we're gonna find that this is the answer here. So whatever we get for the X bar, X bar is their sample mean, okay? Sample mean, which we get from adding all of these together, is the exact same as mu, which is the population mean, which is the actual answer, right? So that's why it's so useful. Um, because say if we don't know the population mean, we can use the central limit theorem to find out the population mean. Uh, so I'll just get rid of these numbers here. So that's the first thing. The mean of the samples always equals the mean of the population. Next thing is we always get a normal distribution from the samples, no matter what shape the original distribution is. So this green distribution up here, it isn't normal, but it does look sort of normal. There's still sort of a bell and there's tails on both sides. And um, so it's not too crazy to think that it might end up like a normal distribution like this. But the, the, the thing is that you can get kind of crazy distributions that'll still end up as a normal distribution. So there's a thing called the exponential distribution that looks something like that. Uh, and if you take loads of means, loads of samples from this group here, you're still gonna end up with a normal distribution. Or if you get um, I don't know, a really crazy one that looks like this. If you take loads of different samples from this, you'll still end up with a normal distribution. No matter what the, the underlying distribution is or the original distribution, you're always gonna end up with a normal distribution. So that's another pretty impressive thing about the central limit theorem. So next then, it says the standard deviation of the sample normal distribution, 
So that means the standard deviation of uh, this normal distribution here, which we call um, sigma x, is the sample normal uh, deviation, or the sample standard deviation, is equal to, so this delta x is going to be equal to the standard deviation of the population. So the standard deviation of the population is this up here, 10.64, which we're given in the question, divided by the square root of the sample size. So the sample size in this case is 30, n is equal to 30 people. So it's not the thousand, um, it's n is equal to 30. All right, so it's how many people are in each individual sample. So that's easier to write as, or I'll just get rid of some of the other. That's easier to write like this, that sigma x, which is the sample standard deviation, again, is gonna be somewhere here, is equal to sigma, which is the population standard deviation, divided by the square root of n. So have a good look at that, and remember, because we're gonna be using it in the next video where we're gonna answer a question using the central limit theorem. And then the last important point about the central limit theorem is that it only works for sample sizes 30 or bigger. I don't have that written, but it's n is greater than or equal to 30. So as long as there are 30 people in your sample and you take loads of those samples, then it'll work. If you have less than 30, the central limit theorem won't work as well. Okay, so that is the basics of the, of the central limit theorem. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be using it to answer a question. So yeah, again, we'll see you next time. If you liked the video, like and subscribe, share it with friends. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.